soft matters. Talking physics, talking life. Today on The Physics Factor, I have the pleasure of chatting with physics professor Carl Frank here at Cornell University. Thank you so much, Carl, for joining Thanks. me today. The first thing I always like to ask people is, how did you get interested in physics? I grew up in a, in a culture where a hobby called amateur radio was very popular, and also where it was a cool thing to be able to build electronics and things like that. So I, I kind of learned a bunch about that, and I really loved you know, getting books out of the library as a kid that were sort of project oriented. Uh, wasn't particularly good at it, but I really enjoyed doing it, mm -hmm. and I sort of thought of that would be fun. And that amateur radio club stuck with you because I know you have an. Yeah, I'm still doing it well. It's sort of it's sort of funny because now that I have more time on my hands, it's um, it's fun to go back and but also to try to make it contemporary. We recently got an email from the department. Actually, Carl's doing an outreach project with 4-H coming yeah. up where you're building crystal radios. Mm -hmm. And I realized I don't even know what a crystal oh, radio yeah. is. Well, it's, it really is old school. But uh, when we were working down at the science center. Uh, my oldest son uh, put together an exhibit. Uh, Kathy Kraft, uh, who was exhibits coordinator, had a, a really good remark. Picture the following situation. It's, all, it's like 100 years ago. Uh, you're on a farm in upstate New York or out west or whatever, and the family doesn't have any money, no money. Okay. Uh, things are tough. And you're rural. You don't have electricity. A boy or girl in the family is reading this magazine, and, and it's telling them how to build a radio. And, and it's really amazing because you can build this thing and maybe with that wire fence that's out there, you know, keeping your cows in place, you suddenly have uh, built this thing that's incredible. And in those days, you know, the pull-in signals from far away were pretty amazing. So what Kathy had made the point was saying, you don't even need electricity for this darn thing. It's empowering for the children because uh, they'll they're the first to hear that radio work. The, for the first time that actually works, the radio they've been working on, they'll hear it for the first time. You know, we may help out, like if it doesn't work, maybe you should try this, maybe you should try that. But the other thing is, if they've got um, some real patience when they go home, they'll be able to experiment and discover, oh yeah, you know, that fire escape or this, that, it's working for an antenna on ground. Nice. So it's the kind of hook, you know, that, that gets us in there. And then you can sneak in the physics too, you know, there's a lot to, to think about. BNM 101. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it just goes on and on. So, yeah, so I, if like for example, in the um, the course I'm teaching, we do transmission lines and antennas and stuff like that. When I teach that course, I wonder, boy, you know, is somebody going to catch me here because I'm doing all this stuff that I want to, just for fun? <laughs> and it's sort of a combination of stuff that I'm you know, playing at home with the radios. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if my department chair is listening, well, it's okay, it's all good. It's all, we're, <laughs> we're still learning you know, the physics, we're still it's learning okay. The <laughs> yeah. It also involved me in the community a lot because, um, again, as a later in life kind of activity, I got to kind of rejoin the amateur radio community. Like I, I gave a lecture, you know, quote, lecture to our club at the end about antennas and stuff like that. And it was pretty good. You know, there were things that I was, I was learning about radiation resistance really and, and wanted to explain it. But there was a lot of practical stuff and I realized afterwards, you know, I'm no better at putting that, making that antenna work than, than most, I'm, I'm worse than most of these people because they've done it more. And so it was sort of, it's, it's a good to learn. It's kind you of know, humbling. It's humbling okay. and you realize, yeah. you know, okay, I might know the science, but the technology, you know, it's like, it's like a little a, bit different. Yeah, yeah. like I mean, I'm curious uh -huh. though, because you started out in this kind of electronics uh, interests, yeah, yeah. and now your research is in biophysics. Right. So how oh, does that yeah. transition? Well, yeah. actually, <laughs> actually, it's circling back again. Uh, my most of the time that I was here, I worked in critical phenomena. It gave so me a lot. The key there with critical phenomena is that you're looking at boundaries between two states yeah, of a system. Right. Right. So in this case, the boundaries were typically hard walls of decorated surfaces, uh, chemically altered surfaces. People were getting new ideas about the behavior of liquids near boundaries and interfaces. It was very natural to start moving into biology because they were starting to look at interfaces. It brings this whole business of telecommunications back in okay. because when you look at the, the world of biological physics and or biology and what physicists can do, it's, it's all about measuring stuff and what's interesting to measure. And you look at <laughs> cell biology, it's all about signals. They talk about cell signaling and, and, and messages. And, but when you crack open the books, you don't see any numbers. Mm. So if you were a telecommunication engineer who is engineering a cell phone network, you know those numbers. You know that 
that uh, the Verizon can take more subscribers and, and keep the, the uh, service still working. Bill Bialik in Princeton has done has been doing this over the years. But for cells. For living matter, okay. exactly. So he starts to lead us in that path, in that direction of quantifying, quantifying information flow in living matter. We have been doing that. It's been very satisfying and fun and, and interesting. And boy, that's, that's the place to be when you're uh, helping to bring a new measure to something. And again, the biologists are loaded with t tons of cool ideas. And what's, what's funny about them, they live this horrible life where everything matters. But for physicists, we can sort of break it out. We like and, to make it as simple as possible, yeah, the yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how interdisciplinary it all is. It is. That it really is physics and biology hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're knucklehead if you don't take advantage, advantage of all the, the stuff that's swirling around you here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you so oh, much for chatting oh, with gee, me today, thanks, Carl. Thanks for the time, really Catherine. <laughs> The great thing is we, we give a, a sort of like a, the node skate. If there's anything wrong with this thing, we'll give you, we got the parts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And one of our, uh, my son's buddies had they built it at a science center and it wasn't working. And we said, my gosh, it's a radio and it's not working. We'll be right over there. It's like, you know, it's like, wow, wow, it's like an emergency. It's like, so we get over there.